Some of these photos were taken with a $100 film camera, while the other was taken by a $5,000 film camera. Which one is which? Does the price of a film camera really have that big of an impact on the photo that you take? Stay tuned to find out. We live in a modern day era where social media is always telling you that you need better and more expensive gear to take better photos. Now I'm sad to say that I've been a poor victim of gas in social media. I've bought multiple film and digital cameras and dozens of lenses only to find out that this loop never ends. Which is also kind of partially why this channel exists. After a few years of having shot both an array of expensive and cheap film cameras, I find myself asking one simple question, which I'm sure all of us have asked ourselves throughout this photographic journey. Does the more expensive film camera take better photos? And does it make me a better photographer? Now, before we compare the photos in detail, let's take a closer look at what cameras we are comparing. So this is a $100 film camera. It is a Zenit E film camera that was made, I believe somewhere in the 1980s because there's an Olympic logo with the 80 on it. And this film camera plays a particularly important role in my life because it's the first film camera that I ever used. Uh, it was a gift from my sister, shout out to Desiree, uh, because she knew I was getting into photography at that time. But as I mainly shot digital, I only shot one roll of film on this camera, and actually I put it in the back of my dry box for more than 10 years. So before shooting this video, I actually wasn't sure if this film camera was still working or not. But although this is a cheap film camera, this camera is built like an absolute tank. It feels extremely solid and heavy. And you can tell that it's definitely been through some sort of use over the past few years, but the camera still, still feels really solid and it still feels really reliable. Now there are sort of parts of the camera which are starting to peel and everything, but I think this camera for what you pay for is definitely a very strong and reliable camera. So having shot, having not used this camera for more than 10 years, the knobs and the winds definitely feel a bit more tight. The rewind function is starting to feel a bit loose, but I think all these sort of minor problems can be fixed by a local um, you know, repairman. So these are all fixable problems. Now, on the other hand, we have a Leica MP black paint. Now, apologies that I brought the wrong camera to the studio today. So this is actually the M10 on black paint, but essentially a very similar uh, similarly designed uh, camera. So today I shoot primarily with the Leica MP black paint and it costs somewhere in the ballpark of four and a half thousand US dollars. And for this photo shoot, I use the Leica 50 millimeter Summicron uh, or known as the Rigid. And the Leica MP stands for mechanical perfection. And it definitely feels that way in the hand. The dimensions and weight of the camera is perfect for everyday shooting and it feels really well balanced in the hand. The camera almost feels like a natural extension of me and that's how great it is to use. And the cool thing about black paint camera is that every black paint camera will age differently because of its coating and the finishing and I think this is one of the appeals to why we're so drawn to Leica and its black paint cameras. Now, obviously this camera is almost 50 times cheaper than a Leica MP black paint, but it is not by any means uh, inferior to the camera. Now, I think one of the great things about film photography is that when we're looking at film cameras, these cameras are timeless. We're not comparing digital cameras where you need update in sensors, autofocus, dynamic range, or low light sensitivity. Everything about film photography just boils down to the lens as well as the film stock that you're using. So if we disregard all those aspects, I think that it also makes film photography a lot more fun and accessible. And that's why we're making this video to show you guys how these cameras compare with one another. Now to do the comparison, I took both cameras for a portrait shoot with my dear friend Christy. And once again, shout out to Christy 
for agreeing to this photo shoot despite the cold weather of only 9 degrees uh, Celsius. So do give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see Christy in future videos. Now in both cameras, I loaded a Portra 400 film and I shot them side by side. Uh, to meter for these photos, I used the light meter that was present in the Leica Epi Black Paint and I adjusted the settings accordingly. Now the Leica, I mean sorry, the Zenit E does come with a light meter, but I heard that because it's made of selenium, uh, these light meters don't tend to work very well over time, so I used the light meter in the MP Black Paint. Now shooting and focusing with the Zenit was definitely a little bit more challenging, mainly because there's this second aperture ring, and basically when you adjust to focus, you will open up the aperture so that you can see more in the frame but you need to remember to close the frame after you are done. So I'm going to share these photos side by side. Can you tell which camera or which photo is from which camera? And do you think that photo is 40 or 50 times better? So what do you think of the photos? To be honest, I think the Helios does an amazing job. I actually really like the photos that come out from the Helios lens. To be fair, the Helios lens is actually quite sought after nowadays. I think mainly because people like its soft and sort of swirly um, bokeh, which appeals to a lot of portrait photographers nowadays. So I know a lot of people will attach this lens onto mirrorless cameras and actually use them for shooting. It does have a very unique characteristic. I do think that the photo uh, sharpness and the tones are a little bit better in the Leica, but at the end of the day, I think what photo you like or what when rendering you like really comes down to personal preference and choice. Now, this purpose of this video is not to by all means say how undervalued the Zenit is or how, how overpriced the Leica is. I think the point of this video is just to show you guys that although it's very easy to get hung up with gear and lenses and everything, actually photography can be boiled down to its essentials, which is go out and shoot and create photos. Because I think, especially nowadays, when we're consuming you know, photos and social media, it's very easy to get drawn into you know, what we're shooting with. But in fact, when we just take any cheap, inexpensive camera, you can actually get a very, very good shooting experience. So anyway, guys, we hope you like this video. Let us know what you think about the photos in the comments below, and let us know about any choices of any inexpensive film cameras that you think might be a great choice for people who are looking to get into film photography. And uh, don't forget to give us a like, comment, and subscribe. We wish you guys a happy new year, and we're looking forward to producing more content and video for you guys in 2024.